good evening and uh, welcome to this little evening devotion, evening uh, prayer. It's Thursday, the 24th of June, and um, let me just read the final verse of Psalm 82, one of the Psalms for this evening, a Psalm of Asaph. And verse 8 says, Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise for ever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us, Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Well, that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. So we keep a few moments quiet. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Well, Psalm 82 that uh, we began with uh, picks up uh, God as uh, the judge, the judge of all the earth. And uh, that theme comes through uh, in our reading. It's Malachi and chapter four. Let me read it for us. Surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. And then you will trample down the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. Uh, well, today is uh, the day uh, in uh, the year, the church year, where we remember the birth of John the Baptist. Um, I don't know what it was uh, like uh, to be in Cornwall just a couple of weeks ago when uh, they were making preparations for uh, the uh, various uh, world leaders for the G7 summit. Um, I remember living in London when there were preparations happening for some important occasion. I can't remember what it was now, perhaps the visit of an American president uh, or maybe preparations for the Lord Mayor's uh, show and parade. Uh, but the thing that sticks in my mind is that uh, with all the heightened security uh, about terrorist threats that uh, they went throughout the city and the manhole covers and the drain covers all got checked and they had little rubber seals put on them to show that they'd been checked, opened uh, and checked and then sealed. And so at a glance you could look down and you could see the rubber seal and you knew that it hadn't been tampered with. Nobody had gone near to it. Well the preparation was that thorough uh, and that detailed so that when the big day came, when the dignitaries arrived and the celebrations began, well the celebrations could be enjoyed and not ruined by uh, someone spoiling the day. Well we know don't we that John the Baptist very much had that kind of preparatory ministry, uh, a ministry of getting things ready. He was not the main event. He was not the long awaited for, long promised Messiah dignitary, but he'd come to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord, come to prepare the way for the Lord by preparing the people for him. And Malachi describes uh, two days in our reading, a day of terrifying judgment and a day of healing and leaping. So you can see these uh, two days as he, uh, the prophet looks ahead to the Lord's coming. Uh, so he says, verse one, surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. This is the day of God's judgment. 
It's there again in verse 5. I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. But then there's this uh, second day of, uh, of joy and, and leaping. Uh, so it's there in uh, verse 2. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. A day of terrifying judgment as the prophet looks ahead and a day of healing and of leaping for joy. And Malachi says the way uh, to ensure that you get to enjoy uh, the second of those two days, the celebration, the healing uh, and the leaping for joy is, well, it's to make sure that you don't get caught out by the first of those days, the great and dreadful day of the Lord's judgment. It will burn like a furnace, he says. Uh, the way to enjoy the celebration and the healing uh, and the joy of the second is not to get caught out by the first, is to be ready, is to be prepared. And Malachi even helps us to know what that looks like. We, we know from Jesus, don't we, in the Gospels, that um, it is John the Baptist who fulfills this um, uh, Elijah, uh, prophet of Elijah-like uh, ministry that Malachi talks about here. And so Malachi is describing John the Baptist's ministry um, here when he's talking about the prophet Elijah coming before that great and dreadful day. And he describes it uh, in terms of repentance kind of language. So John the Baptist's ministry will be one of turning, turning hearts, turning hearts back to God in readiness for the Lord's coming. Well, the gospel writers record it like this, don't they? That John came preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That's Luke 3, verse 3. Uh, John himself uh, speaks, doesn't he, to the Pharisees about fleeing the wrath to come. There's that sense of getting ready uh, getting ready in advance of that terrible day of judgment. In our broken world, in our fallen and hurting world, often we find ourselves longing for justice, don't we? Longing that wickedness would be stopped, longing that evil would be punished and that wrong things would be put right. Those are good things to long for. The problem is, if we're honest, well, we are just as much a part of this guilty, fallen, broken, uh, wicked world, as much deserving judgment as the next person. And so John's ministry reminds us that well, Jesus came to uh, do all of those things. He came to put wrongs right uh, and he did it by coming to die uh, and to take the punishment that we deserve so that we need not be condemned when that great and dreadful day of judgment comes. But also we know, don't we, that God raised Jesus from the dead to prove that he would be uh, that judge one day when he returns as Lord and judge. And so John's ministry, ministry of preparation, ministry of encouraging repentance, uh, encouraging us to turn back to God while there is still time to repent and to believe for the forgiveness of sins is such a vital ministry, isn't it? And we still need to hear that today. So I'm going to pause and uh, perhaps you might like to think of someone this evening, someone that perhaps you've prayed for before, perhaps you've been praying for them for years, perhaps someone that you deep down know is not ready for that great and dreadful day, someone who's not taken the opportunity to be ready, to prepare, to turn their heart back to God. Well, perhaps you could bring them to mind now, pray for them again, pray that they would repent and believe. And then I'm going to use the collect for today as uh, we pray together. So just a moment's pause. And so Father, we bring these people that we've thought of to you and we come before you ourselves. Humble us, we pray, turn our hearts back to you again. And the collect for today. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Saviour, by the preaching of repentance, lead us to repent according to his preaching, and after his example constantly to speak the truth, boldly to rebuke vice, and patiently to suffer for, the truth, for truth's sake, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So may the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.